Hello, everybody. Good morning. Sorry, I had challenges with my internet, so that's why I'm just joining. Um, please allow me two minutes to set up and share my screen here. Yeah? All right, so good morning again. I have news that's not so not so good, but yeah, I apologize and it's it's what it is. So we have to just try and um, make the best of of the days that you know lie before. So the last class um wasn't recorded. Um. And that was um, my fault. So I did not take note of the fact that the class was not being recorded. But, you know, it's a recording I started for today. So what we'll do is um, just for the purpose of having that content online, I'm going to just quickly brush through it while I um, focus on the main, uh, the main, um, you know, vision or the main purpose of today's class, right? I'll just try to touch on some of those things that we talked about here in the last class. Okay, so um did I open the wrong this is this has to be the wrong folder. It's not yours. So let's um Let me get to right. I think this is okay. So last time we talked about conditionals. And um I gave an assignment that has to do with something like this. I don't know if we have done the assignment though, but it should be very easy for everybody. And I wanted to give a general feedback. If if I've graded your assignment and you saw that you scored less than you should, the most prevalent um, reason I, I think I took note of would be the fact that you did not adhere to instructions. Okay, 
Um, so we said that we should write a function, okay, that prints to the console depending on the setting condition. That was the that was the question, all right. And then I was specific. I did not say um, give an output. All right. If I said that, then it will be open to interpretation. But I said it should log to the console. All right. And then some persons were doing things that has to do with the DOM, reading the web page and stuff like that. That was in the question. All right. So I did not want to award 0 0.1 for it, but I had to acknowledge your effort and just give you one. But in case of next time, follow the instruction and give us what we requested for. Um, we are very critical about that because when you start working for clients, right, they would not, um, okay, thanks. Let me share my screen. Oh. So you see my screen in a few minutes. I think sharing was disabled. So let me try to get you to share to enable the sharing. Let's see. Let's start. And I think Okay, so I'll send him a message. So, yeah, as I was saying, when you start working for clients, um, they will not appreciate you doing something that is not asked for, unless that client is somebody who doesn't really know what he wants. If you meet a client that knows what they want, I promise you, they give you a UI to reproduce, and you do something more beautiful than what they gave you. I mean, more beautiful, but it's deviated from what they give you to do, but it's more beautiful. Anybody who looks at it will say, this site is clearly more beautiful than this. But as long as it deviates from the experience that they have in mind, all right, when they conceive the idea, they're not going to be happy with you. They might not pay you, they might be very, they might be very, um, you know, I don't know what word to use, they'll be disappointed, all right? And most clients will show their displeasure, okay? So I appreciate um, people who try to um, put in more work and, you know, but then what we're trying to do is to imbibe that culture of um, having you um, follow instructions, resist the urge to overdo, right? Resist that urge. It's there. It happens to every developer, right? And we see the UI that, you know, a UI designer, uh, cooks up for us and we're like, man, this is too, who is this UI designer? This is too, too boring. And then there's that temptation to want to, um, <clears throat> that temptation to want to do it your way. Please don't fall for that temptation. All right. That's the, um, that's the, the self-control, all right. That's the maturity that is a developer needs to have, all right. Um, recently, I worked on a project, and you know, um, it, there were some of these things that came up, right? But then you have to be mature enough to follow the design, all right? You have to be mature enough to follow the design, okay? Talking about backend, if you give a specification for an API or an endpoint, follow it. If you have problems with it, you, you have to go back again and consult the project owner, right? You consult the project owner. And then there was, so I'm speaking about endpoints, Savage. So you consult the, the project owner and say, oh, I think that this would be better if we do it like this, if we do it like this. 
All right. And when they accept and approve, you can now go ahead and implement what you think, you know, is, is good. All right. What you have discussed with them and what they have approved. All right. So in the case of an assignment, you go come to the group. Don't try to surprise me and say, oh, uh, they'll do something that will blow his mind. No, if it deviates from the instruction, it's not going to blow my mind, trust me. All right. So you follow the instruction. If you have questions, if there's that creative spirit is coming up and you're like, you want to do something crazy, please come back to the, the um, group, the back end group or the front end group, anyone. You um, post a message there, you know, uh, but would it be okay if we do it like this, we do it like this, and then you get feedback and you know how to, how to proceed, all right? So that is it. Um, I'm going to, so our time is fast spent. I don't know if this sharing stuff has been resolved. If we are going, uh, perhaps I'm going to request for more time for our session. I don't know, but let me reach out again and see. Um, just give me some time to reach out. All right, guys, please confirm if you can see my screen. Oh, we can see. All right, great. So let's begin the class of today. So we did conditionals last time. And I'm going to talk about control flow. And this will be loops. Okay. So um, normally, your your program is going to run from top to bottom, okay? If I bring back the code for conditionals, you can see that it will run from the top. First of all, create this function, all right? And this is just a function declaration. It doesn't do anything um, other than just create this function and store it somewhere, okay? And at this point, we call the function, okay? That's when the function does something. So we pass in four and five because we've specified those as parameters that this function should um, accept. And then we return the addition of both of them, okay? So that's what happens here. And when you return the addition, you get nine, all right? And then it runs like this, nine um, greater than 10. Is nine greater than 10? The answer is, False, all right? So this would not run, but it will come here and also run this one and say, um, add numbers, this is, this is nine. Is nine greater than five? And this passes, and then you see the very passed test, all right? But if this also failed, if this also returned false, then to come to the last guy, 
the else um, block and then it will print out uh, a field test, okay? So if you look at the flow, it runs from top to bottom. That's how the JavaScript program typically runs, okay? And even um, when you come to conditionals, it's going to still run from top to bottom, maybe. It only runs the second condition. If the first one um, wasn't fulfilled, all right? If it's returned false, that's when it's going to run the second, it's going to run the third. It runs from top to bottom. But then with um, with the control for flow um, um, constructs, right? You can actually um, um, create an exception, okay? So you can loop um, a setting a line of code multiple times, all right? So how do we do that? So we have, we have like, three of them or four. I think we have while, we have do while, we have four and we have, um, um, is this switch? No, no, switch is conditional, okay? So these are the three main loops that we have. There are other um, enhanced form of these guys, all right, that we could use like for each when dealing with arrays, you know, stuff like that. Okay, for each, for in, for off, when dealing with arrays and objects. But we get there. For now, I'll just uh, introduce you to this. These are the three main uh, types of loop, okay? So I'm gonna start with the while loop, do while loop, and then the for. So for while loop, it's very simple. While condition, all right, run what you find in the block. All right, if you want to really remember it, change y to if. You see that that's just a difference between the if and the while. All right, but if you used if, it's just a conditional. This block of code will run based on the condition that happens here. But when you change it to while, all right, this block of code will run based on the condition. So if this condition returns true, somebody is drawing on the screen, please, can you? Um, refrain, that might be a mistake, so I would guess. All right, let's just be careful, okay? So while um, condition, if, you, if it resolves to true, um, this block of code is going to repeat itself. As long as this condition remains true, this block of code is going to repeat itself, all right? Um, and you have to be careful because you can easily get an infinite loop. All right, it loops a loop that keeps looping. So it gets looping, and then you you know what will happen because JavaScript is single threaded. Your program is going to be blocked, and your browser might crash. Okay, so you want to um, avoid having infinite loop. So how do you avoid having an infinite loop? So let's say we have um, let um, condition equals true. Okay, and then you put the condition here, all right? So let's make it more clear. Age equals to 12. So we're saying while age is equal to 12, we want this block of code to repeat itself. You can tell that this is going, for, this is going to be forever um, true because age is 12, all right? We need a way to change age at some point so that this condition returns false. Okay, we need a way to change age so that this condition returns false or else it's going to loop forever. So um, this is the syntax. Let me write the syntax so that for those who want to copy condition, okay? I'm gonna write the syntax, you do, do this. So run this block, okay? Um, then I'm going to comment it out, all right? So we have the condition now. The condition is age equals to 12. Or let's say um, as long as age is less than 15, all right? So let's do something like that. I'm going to say while age is less than 15, all right? I want to, um, what do we do now? Want to alert um, 
So I'm going I'm going a bit advanced now. Um for some persons. Um you must be above let's do 18. So let me change this to 18. You must be above 18. Okay. You must be above 18 to view this site. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll change this to a prompt. And then I'll say, enter your age. All right, so what will happen is, um, enter your age is going to give us a prompt. All right, the program is from top to bottom. I like to do this so that you build that mental model in your, in your head. All right, so let's age cause prompt. So the program will read from top, the line, the first line it sees is let age, you know, this line. So it will now read from left to right. All right, you have declared the variable, you have assigned the value to it, all right? And then what's that value you're assigning? You know, this function has to run to, for you to get the value that we assigned to this. So that's a prompt. It should give us an input on the um, web page. And then when the user enters a value and clicks on OK, the value entered in that input is going to be returned here. So if the user entered, 15, for instance, you're going to return 15. All right, so 15. All right, 15 will be stored in age. And then to keep reading and to come to this while loop. And then we're saying if age is less than 18, and if the user entered 15, this condition will be true. So what to do now, it will, it will alert the user, say you must be above um, 18 to view this site, all right? In fact, let's also make this a prompt. So while it's telling the user it must be above 18 to view this site, please enter age again. All right, so that it's just, we'll just use one stone to kill two birds. So I can use my um, back ticks and then make this double line. I hope it works. All right, so, yeah, let's see if it works. Okay, so when we enter, when we put this prompt again, now we want to reassign age a course prompt. So whatever the user enter again at this point is going to be, um, you know, assigned to the age, all right, value. And then after I'm going to do something here, um, I'll say um, number, because I know that that prompt is going to return a string. So I'm going to convert it to a number if I do my comparison. So let me see if this code will work. Um, back to the browser and refresh. So let's see. Uh, so let's see if my. All right. So let's enter 15. You must be above 18 to view this side. Please enter age again. So let's try 19. And once I say so that should be all. So hold on, there's a problem. All right, let's debug together. Okay. Um, let's see. What am I missing? So we have this. Oh, age is always 15. That Sorry, so I have to make this a prompt. Um, make this a prompt. I forgot to undo what I did. So enter your age, right? Age. And if we go back and refresh. So these are these are already an infinite loop, so I have a problem. I have to close it and restart again. All right, so now we get it right. Enter your age, and then we're going to enter our age 15, and press OK. So you see it tells us, you must be above 18 to view this side. Please enter your age again. If I enter 17, it's still going to repeat, all right? So this is going to keep looping until I enter the right age less than 19 and say OK. It has, it has gone away and given us access to this site. 
So let me do something here. And I'm going to say if, so you see we're combining both the if and the while, all right? I'll say if age, age is greater than 18, then let's console the log something. Access granted, all right? So let's try again. I'm gonna reload, reload. So, let's see where our problem is coming from. Yeah. I'm going to restart my server. Let's restart the server. Let's see. All right, enter your age. So I'm going to say, um, 15, and if I press okay, it says you must be above 18, and then I'm gonna do 19 now. I say okay, so if we inspect and go to the console, you see access granted. All right, now I did that to show you that um, you can do anything, all right, in place of console.log. So immediately the user enters an age that is above 18, you can decide to render your page, you can decide to um, take them to another website, you know, stuff like that. You could do anything in between this if block. I'm just trying to show you the building block of um, um, your program, all right? With the control flow and with the um, conditionals, okay? So that's it. So what the while loop does is that as long as this condition remains true, you are, you are gonna keep getting this block of code run. Okay, so it will repeat five to 11, sorry, five to 12, all right, as long as this condition is true. But immediately this con condition returns false, it's going to stop looping, all right? And the more, um, the more general example you are going to see with respect to loops is a counter. So let's do a counter, and this is more easier to understand. So we have a counter, sorry, a variable we call counter, and it will be equals zero, okay? So I'm going to say, as long as counter is less than 18, right, we want to keep logging to the console, um, the value of counter, all right? And then, because we know that if we just run this program like this, we're going to get um, an infinite loop, what we'll do is that we'll look for a way to increase the value of counter, all right? So with every iteration, what we want to do is we want to increase the value of counter. So it's okay, counter equals to counter plus one. So every time this loop runs, the first time it runs, it's going to check, is counter less than 18? This is going to be zero the first time, right? Is zero less than 18? That's true. So the condition is true. It's going to run this um, block of code. So we get zero printed to the console the first time. And then counter, this variable, will be, will be equal to, so we are reassigning counter, what's the value of counter? Zero plus one, zero plus one is one. So this will now become one. So the second time this loop wants to run, it's going to check what's the value of counter? Counter is now one. Is one less than 18? The answer is true. So this loop is going to run. It's going to log that one to the console. So what do we have in the console now? In the console, we have zero, we have zero, and we have one, all right? And after login, it's gonna run this code. Counter, which is now one plus one, is gonna be two. I have to check again. Um, is two, which is the current value of counter, less than 18? If the answer is true, the loop, the body of the loop, this block of code is gonna run, we now get two, all right? And then it's, checks again and increases to 
by one, and then you get three. So that's going to repeat until fast forward and we get 19. We're going to check is 19 greater, is 19 less than 18? And the answer is false. So this is going to return false. And this block of code is not going to run. So you see, it has been grayed out, all right? It's not going to run. All right? And then that's when the loop will stop. So let's see that happen um, practically. So we'll start at zero, and then we'll have all our variables in place. And if we check, you see that it runs from zero to 17, all right? Because in fact, as soon as this guy gets to 18, when he checks, is 18 less than 18? The answer is false, also false. So it will not run, all right? So that's why you don't see 18 printed in the console, all right? But if we wanted 18 printed the console to run from zero to 18, what we'd have done is simply do less than or equal to, all right? And this is how you write it actually, less than or equal to. Ah. So, so my um, there's there's um a setting I did on my Visual Studio Code. That's why you're seeing it written like this. But for those of us who are not familiar with maths, this is how it looks like less than equal to, right? So in your editor, it's going to appear most likely going to appear like this. But in mine, there's a setting I did that makes it look like like that. All right. So this is the syntax. Yeah, so I wish you can see it. Okay. So I don't want anybody to be left behind. So what I'll do is I'm going to paste it here and I'm going to zoom in so that you see. So it's going to look like this for you. All right. Less than is the less than symbol. Your left hand, you know, at an angle, it's going to give you less than, greater than your right at an angle. So if you want less than or equal to, you write it like this. If you want greater than or equal to, you write it like this. Okay. So that is it. So you see now we have 18 in the console. All right, so I said less than or equal to. Okay, and that is that for the while loop. So you have, you have to take note of it. The while loop looks very simple, all right? But for the while loop, we need an external variable, all right, that's outside this block, okay? And that is going to be our counter or or our condition, our condition has to be outside because if your condition is inside, you are most likely going to get an error or an infinite loop because it doesn't make sense. It has to be outside, okay? So you can, at your spare time, don't just take every of my statement for it. You can try and put your variable inside, the variable that controls the loop. Put it inside and see if it's going to work for you and then find out why it doesn't work. And yeah, it's going to help you. A lot okay so that is for while loops i believe that this is like the simplest loop to understand okay while loops are very simple while the condition and if the condition is true your loop your code block is going to keep running the condition returns false it's not going to run the code block okay so the next loop we're going to talk about is the do while loop the do while loop so for the do while loop what you're going to do is you see this part of your while loop, you can cut it and say do here, come to the end of the code and paste what you just cut, and that's the do while loop, all right? So I'm, I'm just trying to build that, um, you know, mental construct, how to morph from this, is you saw that we went from if, right, to while, and then I want to do do while. You remove this, change it to do, and then name it, paste this, and here you get do while. So um, what it does is, or how it works is that it's going to say do this while this condition is true. So what's the difference between the do while and the while loop? The do while is going to run at least once. It must run at least once. But your while loop could you know, or may not even run at all. Your while loop may not even run at all, but your do while loop is guaranteed to run at least once because that's what the statement reads now. If you read it well, it says do this block of code. And while this condition remains true, 
you can repeat the block of code. Okay, so if you want to present something at least once, all right, that's how you do it. So I could say, do prompt. Let me see if this will work. Prompt, enter a number. This must happen once. It must work at least once. And while, so I'm going to say number equals to zero. And then at this point, we're going to be reassigning number to whatever is entered in the prompt, right? So while number is less than or equal to 18, we run this code again. So let's let's save and try again. I hope it works. Um, so it says enter a number. I'm going to try 19 and say okay. So you see that the loop doesn't run it again because this condition returned false. I entered 19. So 19 greater, no less than or equal to 18. Is that true? No, it's false. So this runs false. And so this doesn't run the second time. But you notice that it, I, it ran at least once. It ran at least once. That's something you need to, need to take note of. So let's go back again. Let me try. Oh, I just caused an infinite loop. I'm gonna have to restart my, um, so, so that's why it's tricky dealing with this. Guys, let me see if I'm correct. All right, so let's go. So enter a number, I'm gonna say five and click okay. You see, it will repeat itself because five, we enter the prompt return five and five was assigned to this. And at this line, all we call number, number will be five, all right? So it's five less than or equal to 18. The answer is true. So it will come back to run this line. So this line, is still a prompt. So to prompt again, enter a number. All right, so I can save, and let's go and try again. So I'm gonna enter another number 10, and it will repeat 12, and it will still repeat 17, and it will still repeat, but immediately we enter 18 or above, it's done running, it should be done. So I triggered an infinite loop, I think so. So if we enter 18, so let me see. Number less than or equal to 18. I want to stop the code block, uh, stop execution and be run again. So this should work fine now. Let me enter 18. And then this, now teaching loops can be annoying because you can get into, um, it will be wrong because Said number should be less than equals to eighteen. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, that my bad, my bad on that. So yeah, so it runs because eighteen is eighteen fulfills this condition, so it's going to be true. Yeah, correct. Okay, so you get the gist. Do is going to run at least once, and before it checks the condition. Okay, and if this condition keeps returning true to re rerun this block of code. Um, I rarely see people using do while loop. And personally, I think I've, I don't think I've ever used it. This sounds bad, but I don't think I've ever used it. There might be, there might be legit situations, right? For, for using it, right? But, I'm not sure I've ever used it, okay? But then it's it's important that you know that it's there. Um, because when working with algorithms, some of these things might come in handy, right? And to give you a better solution from what that persons are doing. So it's, it's good you know that it's it's there. Okay. So then the for loop, which is my favorite, and I have the favorite of all the algorithms out there. Even though there are better oh, ways to write, the follow up is there. So please, can you mute? Please check your mic if your mic is on. All right, thank you, Abdul. No, I'll, yeah, Abdul. All right. So let's do the follow. The follow is my 
most loved look to teach because it's very straightforward. All right. So let I, for instance, so with the for loop, I do not need an external variable. All right. So let's do let I, I'm going to select counter. All right. And then I'm going to say, as long as counter is less than, sorry, just brought my lights. Then so this. All right, I'm back. So let counter equals zero. As long as counter is less than 18, all right, we want to run a loop. And then in the end, we want to increase counter. All right, counter should be equal to counter plus one. For some of you that have read ahead, I know you're expect expecting something different here. But there you go. All right, so I'm going to say console the log counter. If I save this code and check the console, oh please, you are done with you, my bro. Uh, I think I'm done with you. So let me restart my Okay. The service loop, man. Okay, so it's zero to seventeen. And it's as a result of this code. So let me explain what's happening here. The syntax for the for loop is or, all right, we write some things here. The first one is going to be our, um, I'll call it condition or control variable, okay? Variable, variable declare, okay? Channel. Then you see this guy, you have to have it. This semicolon to express the fact that this is a statement and you're done with it. And then the next thing is going to be condition. And you put a semicolon and then you put your um, condition increment, right? Or control variable increment. So, yeah. However, I want to express that. Yeah. And then here yeah, is going to be run this block. So what we're saying is this. For as long as this variable I've declared here is less than 18, run this code and then increase the counter. Notice the flow. One is this. Two is this. Three is this, and four is this. It's not as intuitive, but it's very sweet. I like, that's how I like it, all right? The first thing that runs is this. The second thing that runs is this. The third is this block of code. The last is this guy that you see here. So it's gonna say, I'm declaring the counter. Let the counter be equal to zero. But as long as that counter is less than 18, I want you to run this block, all right? And then you would now increment the counter by one. So this is a reassignment. The short form for this would be counter plus plus, all right? And that's what you'll see in most code base, counter plus plus. But what counter plus plus simply means is, all right, increment counter by one, that's counter plus one. That's what it means. Okay. Let me use a simpler way counter plus plus. Now that I've explained what it means. So we go again. First, declare this variable. Second, check the condition. Is that variable less than 18? And if it is, run this block of code. Then increase the counter and start again. So to now come back. The next iteration counter would be one. The checks counter. All right, is it less than 18? If it is, it's gonna run this block of code and it's gonna increase again. And then 
when it starts again, counter with two. And that is going to continue happening until counter becomes 18. And when it checks, what's counter 18? Is counter less than 18? No. Then this block would not run and this will not run anymore. It's just going to terminate at this point. So at any point this resolves to false, your loop is going to terminate. So you see, this guy has been grayed out. That's how the for loop works. It's very, very, very um, easy to understand. All right. So yeah, you have it. So we've talked about the while, the do while, and the for loop. Okay. So let's um, see a, um, let's try to look at a situation where these loops might be useful. Say for instance, you have um, cons, scores, I showed you arrays, right? So these are an array, scores will have 20, 30, 40, 50, 80, all right, 90, and I'm going to use conditionals and everything I've taught you now, I'm trying to, to use them here. So I'm going to have um, 10, I'm going to have 18, I'm going to have um, 24, I'm going to have 67, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's stop here. So what I want to do now is this. So from the list of scores, let's, let's pretend like we're solving an algorithm problem. So from the list, from the list, of scores presented to you, all right? Print all scores above 50 to the console. Now, with all I've taught you now, it's not left for you. I've taught you all you need to answer this question, actually. It's not left for you to now apply logic, all right, critical thinking to solve this problem. So what do you need for this to solve this problem? It says from the list of scores. So I need a list of scores. Where is it? This is it, all right? Print all scores to the console. Or log, sorry, log all scores above 50. So this is a condition to the console. When you say if, or if a score is above 50, log it to the console. So the question can come in any format, but you need to be able to recognize the particular um, paradigm that you have to use to solve it, right? So in this case, I know I need a conditional, yeah, all right? And I know I need a list of scores, and I know that I need to print some things to the console, all right? So what I'm gonna do now is say for, all right, um, counter, so, Normally we'll say let it has to you have to declare it right. So let counter, but then for simplicity, because we know it's a counter, we're gonna say let i equals zero. And then as long as um i is less than scores dot length, all right. You remember dot length. Is it this class I showed dot length? But dot length is gonna give us the length of this array. All right, so I'm going to say as long as i is still less than scores dot length, because I want to look through the entire length of this array. All right, I'm going to say um, do this console dot log scores i. So I told you that to access um, an item, to access an item in an array, you have to use your angular bracket and then the index of that of that um, item that you want to access, right? So I say i here. And I'll come back here and increase i plus plus, right? Now, let's just see and see if this works. So you see that we have everything printed to us from the first to the last, the 67. Let's analyze what's happening here. We declare the variable called i, and it says its initial value should be zero. And then we said, um, as long as that variable i is less than scores the length, what's scores the length? Scores the length, so scores the length, is this array the length? What's the length of this array? Let's count, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is going to be ten. So as long as cos the length, which is ten, right? So you see, as long as i is less than ten, we're going to do print this, all right? So the first time this looks wrong, let's start from the top. Is i less than 10? No, i is zero at this point. So zero less than 10, the answer is yes, that is true. So this block is going to run. And when this block runs, we see scores here, we add the square brackets. Sorry, I called it angular brackets, square brackets. And then this i, what is i? i is zero at this point. So this would be zero. All right, this will be zero. So zero is cause zero is gonna be this. I told you arrays are zero indexed, all right? So it means the first time this runs, what's gonna be logged to the console is gonna be score zero, which is 20. So I have 20 here, all right? And then the next time it runs, because after this block of code would you know, be executed, I is gonna be incremented by one. So the next time this loop is going to happen, the next iteration, I is gonna be one at that time because it has been incremented. So this will now be one less than 10, all right? And the answer is true. So this block is gonna run again. And then at this point, you know that this should be I, right? So I will translate to one the second time. And what is cause one is this, because this is zero and this is one, all right? We'll have 30 printed, okay? So it's gonna run like that until the end. So at the end, which is I, all right, nine. So I will be nine at that point, and this I will be nine. And if you check, is nine less than 10? The answer is yes, all right? And then this point is nine. Know that all these nine are I's, all right? But during execution, they're going to be replaced with their actual value. So cause nine is going to be this, all right? Remember, the index is n minus one, which is the physical position minus one. The physical position, this is 10 minus one, it's gonna be nine, all right? So that's why you get 67. So finally, it's gonna be 67. And then the loop attempts to run again and check. So to increment i by one, so this is gonna be 10. And then at this point, is 10 less than 10? The answer is no, all right? And then the loop would not, this body of the loop would not execute. So let me show you this practically in the browser, like how it's going to appear in the browser. I'm going to show you just for um, repetition and to ensure that everybody understands. So I, this is going to be I, sorry. This is going to be I, okay? It's going to be I. So let's go to the browser. Um, source tab, right? Um, I think, let's see, I'm going to, Put a debugger here. Should I put it there? Put it there. Hmm? 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 Okay. I'm going to put it there. Hmm. No, I'm going to put it here. Okay. So this line will run before it pauses. So this debugger keyword is just a special syntax that would pause execution at this point. All right. So what happens is we'll have this run. So I equal to zero for a start. And as long as I is less than scores the length, right? So as long as less than scores the length, this is going to run. So for this to run, right? For this to run, this has to be true. And this will run. And when it gets to this line, it will print scores and the index of scores to the console. And at this point, it will pause before it increments. It's going to pause here. All right, so let's see it happen. So you see, I'll refresh. You see that execution has paused here, but it's something I want you to take note of. All right. So note that at this point, i is what? i is zero. All right, just put your eyes here. I is zero, all right? What is printed to the console 20? We come back here, 20 is index zero. If I press play, I is one. What's index 
scores index one is going to be 30. Let's check what's been in the console, 30. We come back to here and play. I is what at this point, two. What's index two, 40. What is printed to the console according to our code? So this will be, will be two, right? Scores two is going to be 40. And let's check our console, 40 printed. If you press play again, so at every iteration, all right, you're going to see that it's been incremented. I is not three, all right? What's the index three? That should be 50. That's N minus one. So that's 50. If you check here, this three, right? And 50. If you check back to the console, 50 has been printed. If I play, you're going to see that it keeps doing what it does. All right, this is seven. So let's check what's there. Index seven should be what? All right, what's at the physical location of? So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighteen. Check the console, eighteen is what's printed. All right, if you play, okay, it keeps printing this eight. All right, at ten, that's when the loop is going to stop. So you see the loop has stopped. Execution has you know, finished. We come back, you see that we have all the items printed out in the console, okay? So what I did now is not a requirement for you to understand what's happening. It's just me trying to explain, you know, the step-by-step -step, um, process of what's happening there, okay? Um, then we are not done with the question. The question says we should print only the scores that are above 50. So what we'll now do is, We'll wrap this in an if statement. So we'll say if the score for that particular index is greater than 50, that's when we want to log it to the console. All right, if you check now, it has been reduced to only the scores that are above 50, okay? So that's how programming works. You have, you have um, different concepts that we're going to present to you, then you have to use critical thinking, put them together to solve problems. All right, and that's what you'll be employed for, okay? So you see here, I'm making use of both conditionals and um, control flow, all right? And also, so variable declaration is here, all right? And um, comparison operation is happening here, okay? I less than, all right? Variable reassignment or increment is happening here. You see, these are different constructs, but then they'll be brought together to solve a problem. Arrays happening here. Okay. That's how programming you know works. Okay. So we could this this question can be further twisted into you know um several forms. And you could be asked to um print the scores are divisible by two, all right? And we'll say if score modulo, if scores modulo two is equal to zero, print it. So I'm only going to print the guys that are divisible by two. So if you check everything that's been printed here, they are all divisible by two. And these are not all the elements of the, so you see the one that has seven attached to them, like 67 is not printed. Because this is not divisible by two, right? To get a whole number, that's what I mean by when you divide it by two, you don't have any remind, remainder, right? So modulo is that operator. Okay, so it's like division, but in this case, it will, re, it will return the remainder of the division. So if you use modulo, you are saying whatever scores I represents, which the first time is going to be 20, you want to use the modulo operator on it, divided by two, and then what's it's, it's going to return zero because there's no remainder, remainder from that um, operation. So zero equal to zero is true, so it's going to print 20. We go back, uh, so let's fast forward to where we have 67, and that times cause is going to be nine, and it's going to resolve to 67, and 67 divided by two will give you 30, 33 point something, all right? So that point is a reminder, a remainder, and that's what is going to be, I think it's 0.5, so. 
Am I correct? Oh, sorry. Yeah. What, what so, do you press to get that equal sign? Okay, the equal sign, I did triple equals, equals three times. So let me put it in the console. This is one, two, three. So because of what I have installed, it's going to join them together to give you that long equals. But it's equals three times, okay? So this is going to be 0 0.5. 0 0.5 equals to zero, no. And that's why it's not going to print because this is not going to run because this result will force, okay? So everything I've explained, I tried my best to make it as simple as possible. If you find yourself being confused by any of them, it's not unusual, like, Enjoy it because it's the process. You must be confused at some point. All right. You must be confused at some point. So just test it. Re watch the video or rewatch that aspect all right, that you're confused by. And if you have questions, my DM is open for questions. Or you just go directly to the group and paste it there. Maybe somebody, before I had the time to look at it, somebody might have even answered your question. All right. So it's very, 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 very usual that you might be confused all right, by some of these things, no matter how simplistic the explanation is, okay? Because it's a new concept to some of us. All right, so I think that this is where I would stop. For um, sorry, just a quick question. How do you, how did you connect um, like the console to your VS code? I don't know, like for you to see your results in. I don't know how you connected it. The console to my VS Code. Yeah, like when you run your code on VS Code, the I don't. I think you check it on a web browser or something to see the results. Like, how did you do the connection? All right. So, so I just realized that there is no class after this, so we have some. We can take some time to attend to, to questions. Right. So, yeah. Um, how do I connect it to my console, you see? So let me just take time to explain that. So JavaScript in the browser does not run in isolation, all right? JavaScript in the browser has to run with an HTML file. Or you have to write the code directly in the console. So what I would have done is to copy this code, save, and then go to the console and just paste it. Let me, let me just comment everything out so that there's nothing in the console. All right, so I'll just paste the code here and press enter and it will run. All right, so you can write code directly in the console. That's one way, All right? Another way to go about it is to um, go to the sources tab and then, uh, don't tell. Let's see what I can do. I'm going to go to um workspace. Right, I'm going to add a folder that I have in my laptop. So let me just go to downloads and create a folder. I'll call it um test. And I'm going to add that folder. All right. Why is it not added? Okay, I think it's added, but let's do something. Let's create a file in the folder. Let's create a file in the folder. Um, so there might be a problem that is not allowing the folder to be created. Mm. Just to be sure, Shay, is the VS code you are using? Yeah, I'm just showing you how to write on your on your um console directly. But let's let's do the VS code first. Okay. Since there's something funny happening there. Uh what you do is I'm gonna stop my live server. So what is this? You open your VS code. When you open your VS code, most likely this is the screen you will see, the welcome screen. Go to file. If you are using Windows, I'm not so sure how this will appear, but I'm sure that you will have this icon here, this icon that says Explorer. So you can click on it and then click on open folder. So you open folder and go to your folder. Mine is in downloads. It's called test. I'm going to open it. 
And here you can write, you create an index.html file, all right? And then we are going to write basic HTML syntax and write the script tag. Then you connect this script tag to your external script. In this case, I'm going to say dot forward slash app dot js, right? And save. And you have to create a file app dot js. So now if I write anything in app dot js, all right, it's going to be connected to this page. And then I can see it in the console when I console log. So if I say console log here from app dot js, save. To view it, I have to view this website. So this is the website I will open. So I can right-click on it and say, um, I think from here, right-click on it and say, open with live server. Now you have to have live server installed. All right. Live server. So this is what you're looking for, the extension live server you're looking for. You install it in VS Code. All right, and then you come back here to your file explorer, right click and say open with live server. When you open this file, all right, right click and say inspect and go to console, and you'll be seeing your results here. So everything you do in this JS file now is associated with this HTML file and you can see it in the console, as long as you are logged into the console. All right, so that's how it's connected, basically, okay? If you are a backend folk, uh, you, you just, you're just learning backend as your first um, entry into software development, this might look very strange to you, but I believe that for the front end guys, they know what's happening. Yeah, all right. You're simply just connecting JavaScript to HTML and logging your logging some outputs to the console. Very easy. When we get to Node.js, we don't have to follow this long process. We'll be able to write our codes directly in the terminal. We'll be able to do something like this. Just say node two plus two. Sorry. Just say node, you get into the node environment and you say two plus two. And you get your answer for directly. All right. And you can do a lot of things, just write your JavaScript directly when we get to node. But for now, we're going to do it the, the naive way. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to write it to you. Uh, control C again. And I've exited, could have exited, okay, yeah. All right, so that's it. If we're doing Node, it will be just easy. Just type Node on your, you have Node installed, type Node on your terminal, you get into the Node repel, and you can start writing your code. But for um, web development, right, you have to follow this pattern, get it connected. So having said that, let's let's just take more questions. I think we'll have the time today to so take more questions if I if I take my leave. Um sorry, sir, something unrelated. What what theme or extension are you using in your VS code to make that your less than or equal to appear that way? I forgot to know. Forgot yeah. to mention. Okay. So it's a, yeah, I think it's a combination of some things, right? I'll set my font to something monospace like that. And yeah, I, I think I followed the video. I saw somebody did it and then I followed his lead. And those, these are not essentials. I just told them in my head sincerely because I All right, so I'll, check, I'll check that on YouTube later. Yeah, so. I would take the pain to look for it, all right, and then I would, I would send it to you guys on the group. Yeah, let's just take other questions. Um, 
Don't crush us on the chat. Sorry, what was the shot was used to play that HTML special? As yes, sir. You saw? The shot was used to play that HTML special. Sorry, come again. The shortcut to. Use a shortcut to create HTML structure. Oh, oh, oh that's that's Emmet. Go to the. I don't know if it ships by default with VS Code these days, but it is Emmet. E M M E T. Okay. I think it it should you know come by default with VS Code. All right, but you can install Emmet. Obviously, I don't have it installed. Apostrophe and enter. The structure will come. Yeah. So just write. So if you come here now and start, let's assume you start writing HTML, it will just come out and you can use any of the options. Right? Oh, yeah. I think it comes now with VS Code by default. Um, sorry, sir. I think it's shift one. That exclamation mark, then press enter to come out. Shift one. One, yeah, on my own. Exclamation mark. Yeah. Ah, you don't need. <laughs> Sorry. On, on, the, on the HTML page, not the JavaScript. Yeah, on the HTML page, you meant HTML page. Okay, so that would be that would be correct, yeah. Shift one, yeah. I didn't know that was what you were asking. On the HTML page, on the index on the HTML page, use the shift one. I think he, he, he meant on the HTML file HTML. you created on, inside your test on folder. The visual base code, yes. You're on the JavaScript file. Just open the HTML file, yeah. Shift one will give you the boiler page for HTML. That's the okay. exclamation mark. Okay. I'm totally confused, but I hope the person who asked the question understands what I said. As if you want to get yes, the yes, I did. HTML yes, I did. yes, you just press Shift 1. That means exclamation. It will prompt you to select the border plate for the HTML. All right. So, other questions? So give me feedback on the class. Like, was it was it clear enough? Was it just me? You were just breaking up just now. Sorry, what did you say? Oh, okay, don't worry. You were breaking up at the point, so uh, but I think it's clear now. All right, good. Thank you. So I'm gonna do something um uh, because we are still scratch we are still trying to um, scratch the surface of um of JavaScript at this point. All right, so it will get more difficult as we go. What I've resolved to do is that um, I'll be posting some shorts all right, online to explain, briefly explain specific con uh, concepts. In less than one minute, I'm going to try to explain the concept so that if you ever need to go back and just learn that concept, you don't have to watch the entire video to do that. So I'll post the link to my channel and you can go there and get the shots from there. All right. So that's what I'll be doing. I don't have the motivation to, to create these videos because it usually take time to edit and post and all the stuff. But I think that I'll just use this opportunity as a motivation to, to do that. All right. So yeah, if there are no more questions, um, let's talk about functions before we go. 
talk about functions also. But then the let's talk about functions also. So um, function, okay. So function. I told us the, during the last class that functions are just simple constructs. It's a simple construct that enables enables us to repeat a block of code. All right. Um let's I hope my JavaScript is still let me test if this still works also the log. Okay, so they help us repeat a block of code. So I could say um, function repeat this and um, also the log. Okay, so as long as I call this function uh, as many times as I call this function, all right. We're going to get a printed to the console. So we check for a, a, a. All right. And they're all coming from line three. So this is very important because there are some, there are some small details that we miss. And this will add up to create the difference between you and um, a more competent developer. All right. There are very little things, but the fact that you miss them, they will aggregate to become something significant that will tell the difference between you and another developer. So if you look at this, this console, right? Very subtle that you might miss it. If you look at the console, you see app.js line three. And if you look at this, this is happening at line six. This is happening at line seven. This is happening at line eight. But this, the console is telling us that what is actually happening is at line three. And if you go back, you see that indeed the console.log statement is written where here at line three. Are you getting the gist now? So this is simply repeating what is happening here. That's what this function is doing. So we go back to how I defined what the function is. It simply repeats a block of code. It's a way that we can repeat a particular block of code. So if you call the function, it is actually running this line three. Anytime you call the function, it's actually running this line three. Anytime you call it, this is the line that is being run. If we change this to return, for instance, two plus two, we know we have four printed. All right. Let's see. Um, what have I done wrong? Return. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So since it's been returned, we'll have to console. Not, you've not consulted. Right. We're not logging to the console, right? So the console, the log, the return statement, okay? Right? So now we'll have them logged in the console, 444. Four, four. Let me check now. This is six, seven, and eight. Six, seven, and eight. So you see that it has changed, right? What line is being logged to the console? It is line six, and the next time it is line seven, and the next time it's line eight. Now, this seems like what is guy talking about, but when you start debugging, you would see the effect of what I'm doing right now. Like, you will be more quicker and smarter at debugging than a regular developer, right? When you now when you build your knowledge of JavaScript and you're not debugging, you'll see how these things will, 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 will come into play, all right? So take note of how JavaScript executes. It's very important. There's, 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 there's um, learning about JavaScript as a language, and there is actually taking time to understand how this language executes, all right? 
um, many times you hear about the stack, JavaScript stack, JavaScript heap. Those things sound like abstract concept, but they are not. You can access the JavaScript heap with Node. In fact, you can even access it with your browser, but you have to do some configurations. You can see the stack. It's very easy. The last time I did um, break, not break, debugger, sorry. Debugger, you saw how execution paused at some point. So debugger, sorry, I've already returned and I'm saying debugger. I have to do it before the return statement. So you saw how execution paused. And if you check here, you see stack. This is the call stack. There is repeat this. That's the name of our function. And that is the current function being executed, all right? So I'm not actually teaching you at this point, so you're not trying to wrap your head around what I'm saying. I'm trying to draw your attention to details, all right? So that you'll be that developer that know how to catch details and see what's happening within your program, okay? So that you're not just, it's not just vibe and, you know, inshallah, as this is it, that, oh, I wrote it, return to plus and it worked, but what is happening behind the scene? When you start debugging, which is one, uh, um, quality of a good software developer, they can debug really fast. Uh, so what somebody will debug for a whole day, you can just step in and look at it and say, oh, this is where the problem is coming from, even though it's not obvious, but because you've developed that skill, all right, to, to look for details, all right, and ask questions, you will be a better developer. So back, back to the concept of functions. Now you can see, obviously, that functions could either return a value or not, all right? And all this while we have been using functions, okay? So you see this guy called console.log, this is a function. How do you need a function? It's functions that you call like this. When you use brackets on anything, you are telling the program that this stuff log is a function. That's why using these two brackets so we call it. These are your call functions, right? This console, the log function receives a value and then pass that value to the console. That's what it does. All right, so it's a function. But this function does not return anything. So it returns undefined. If you go back to your console now, refresh, all right? You see that it is simply logging to the console, right? But then let's try something. I'll come here to the console and say console.log and for watch now. If I press enter. What do you see here? Undefined. It logs for to the console quite right, but it returns undefined. All right. I'm trying to tell you that when a function does not return anything, the return value of it is undefined. When a function doesn't return anything, the return value is undefined. So I'm gonna prove it one more time to you and refresh. Since it's coming from our code, you won't see undefined return, okay? But I want to make it very apparent. So I'm gonna say, cons sorry, const return value equals repeat this, all right? call the call to repeat this. Now this function doesn't return anything. If it returns something, this function call is going to resolve to what it returns. But in this case, since we're not explicitly writing the return keyword for something like two plus two, this should have been four. This would have resolved to four because that's what is being returned from this function call, all right? But since that's not the case, we're not returning anything. All we're going to expect is undefined. So if I console the log, return value that we're going to see undefined in the console. All right. So when you have a function without the return keyword, that function is going to return undefined. So every function returns something. All right. But you can either explicitly tell it what to return or it would implicitly return undefined. All right, so it's very important that we know, you know, know that. All right, so if I say return two plus two, this is simply returning two plus two. All right, so if I call that function, 
It returns two plus two, but that two plus two is lost because we're not storing it anywhere. All right. So this is how I thought about it yesterday when I was thinking about it to explain this concept. So when you have a cup full of water, all right, and you pour that water out, the water is going to either spill on the floor and get wasted, or you can decide to put a bucket, a container, all right, beneath it. And when you pour the water out, it gets into that container. So it's stored in that container. That's how variables are. If I, or values are in JavaScript, if I just do two plus two here, two plus two here, this is a value. It's like pouring it just anywhere. Like I'm just wasting it. There's no, there, I'm not storing it inside any container. And you know, variables are containers for values, right? So because I want to have access to this guy, I don't want it to just be wasted or garbage collected. I don't want it to just waste, right? What I'll do is I'll store it in a variable because I want to use it. Well, if you don't want to use it, fine. This line will run. It actually runs. So let me show you debugger. And um, let's see debugger. Let me just pause at that point. And let's try that. Let's see. So if I refresh. Okay, there is, I don't think there's actually no way that I can show you that. But this line actually runs, okay? I don't think I can capture it in the scope. Will it be captured in the... I don't think it will. It's not captured anywhere, all right? It has to be a variable first. So it is just wasted like that. So because we want to have use of this in the future, that's why we store it in variables. So I say let's... Result, for instance, equals two. Now I've created a variable for it and see result here. All right, value unavailable at this first time. When I play, that's after line two has run, the value should have been updated to four. So you see that this line three has to run first and I pause at line four. The C result is four. So I'm going to explain this, all these things in a separate class. Just trying to tell you that we store values in variables so that we're able to use them. Back to functions. You see this function call right now, right? It's actually returning four. But this four is not stored anywhere. All right, it's not stored anywhere. If I pause this um, function here, if I pause this function here at this point, let me do at this point. No. Mm, at what point should I pause? Should I pause? Should I pause? Should I pause? I still would not be able to show you because it just gets wasted. So since this is returning four, this is going to return four. And four is not being stored anywhere. So it just wastes like that. All right. So in order to have access to it, I just say store what is returned in this new variable called result. And then I can use the return value in this variable, which is four. I console log result. You can see that result is four in the console. All right, four. Okay. So in this case, we have to do console log. So I explain things in detail, like when I perceive that somebody's confused. So somebody might have been asking. Why did we have to wrap this guy in the console the log? It's because this is a value being returned and we cannot really have access to it unless we trap it in some way. So we can decide to log it directly in the console or we can decide to store it in a variable and then log that variable to the console. It's still the same thing, all right? By just passing values around, okay? So functions could either return values or not, right? And they could also accept arguments or not, all right? So like I said the last time, let me just spend more, much time here. The number of values you define or you declare here, all right, are going to be the number of values that you can pass into the function during its call. So I said num1, that means I can pass 
a value for norm one and pass a value for norm two. So I could use them here, norm one, norm two. So whatever you pass into norm one gets stored here. Whatever you pass into norm two gets stored here. They are added together and they are returned. The return value is what to be, you know, um, what to be replaced, all right? What this will be replaced with. So in this case, it's going to be one plus two, and this will be three. And three is stored in result, and result is printed to the console. So we expect three in the console. So one plus two, sorry, I said no one plus no one instead of no two. And we expect three to be printed in the console, all right? It's as simple as that. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. So when we get to core JavaScript concepts, I think that's going to start in the second month of this course. I would explain to you what happens in this place. All right. How you can see the process involved in variable creation from the starting to the end of it. I'm going to explain everything in this. But before then, I can send the link um, where you can read up on it, all right? And get prepared for that. So if you have questions, please ask. I think I've come to the end of the class. If you have questions, you can ask. Um, I wanted to ask, you said the core JavaScript starts next month. I thought the core JavaScript was this class. This is basic JavaScript. Oh, really? Because I saw JS 102 on the thing. And according to the, um, what do you call it? According to the timetable, supposed to be for month one. Oh no, this must be a mistake. I have the schedule here, all right? I don't want to open it, but I have the schedule there. I think it should be from month two, is it? Yeah, but month, month is supposed to be So it's supposed to be week. Oh, I think it's week, week three and four. I might be the one in the wrong. It's supposed to be week three and four, all right? So what will happen is that from our next class, from Thursday, I hope I'm available on Thursday. I will be available. So from Thursday, we'll start talking about the core concept. So what I'm going to explain to you, you might have heard that everything in JavaScript is an object. I'll explain what it means. Um, I'll explain how you can use functions to create objects. Um, I'll explain how the global object works and some of all those um, core aspects of JavaScript. I'll start explaining them on Thursday. So thank you. Thank God I mentioned it. I brought it to my attention. I was thinking that the core JavaScript will start next um, next month. Okay. So on Thursday, we'll start digging deep into these things. All right. If you are yet to view to view the uh, what is it called now? The links, those articles I shared on the group, please go and view them for your own benefit. All right. And if you are kind enough, you can leave a like or a comment just to promote the article. Okay. It was written by me actually. All right. So thank you guys. Um, if there are no more questions, I think I'll see you in the next class on Thursday. Sorry, sir. Before you go, um, uh, which uh, link are you talking about, please? I shared them on the back end channel. Okay, on Slack. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll check it out. Thank maybe you. I'll, maybe I'll look for it and pin it. Yeah, that will help. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a nice day ahead.